Uh, last lecture, we were talking about image filtering and uh, we talked about how we can represent uh, uh, an image as a function. We talked about like uh, image digitization. And uh, so today, moving forward, we are going to talk about image noise. Now, before talking about image noise, let's try to uh, understand uh, what each of these pixel values mean. And we'll try to do like a very simple analysis of images, uh, the pixel values. This is called in intensity profiles. Uh, on the left here, uh, we can see uh, we have our grayscale image. And uh, we have drawn like two uh, yellow horizontal yellow lines. And on the right, you can see this is not this, this looks like a histogram, but it's not a histogram. This is an intensity profile of uh, this image. What it shows is as you move from left to right on, along like this yellow line, how the pixel intensity is changing. Since this is a grayscale image, each pixel value will have a value between 0 and 256 or 255, right? So you are starting from the left and you can see like uh, this was the pixel value. And you, as you move forward, you can see like it's dropping, increasing. So it's kind of fluctuating, right? And at this point, you can see like it's uh, dropping a lot. And then it stays uh, very low all the way up to the right. So if you look at the uh, actual image, you will see that uh, on the left, it's mostly clouds. So these are brighter pixels, right? And at this point, you can see like we, we don't have any clouds anymore. We don't have the clouds uh, from this point onwards. And uh, it's kind of sky and it, 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 it has to be blue if you look at RGB image, but it's in this case, it's kind of a darker pixel. And that's the reason like we are seeing this dip. Right? And you can see that it continues because we have sky like all over to the end. OK, so that's kind of intensity profile uh, to understand how the pixel values which will change if you have different uh, objects in, in, in your input image. Now, if you do like similar kind of uh, pixel analysis on the second yellow line on the bottom here, so you will see that uh, this curve was uh, very smooth, right? It was not fluctuating a lot. But if you look at this intensity profile, it's actually fluctuating a lot. Still, it has a pattern because most of these are like dark pixels. And you can see that uh, when we have this uh, tree trunk, it's actually darker. So it's, uh, it's a huge dip here. But overall, you will see like it's kind of fluctuating a lot. And this one is kind of smooth. Now, if you look at the original image on the left, you will see that uh, this object is kind of, uh, it has a very flat surface, right? The cloud. And in this case, it's ground. So it's, a, it's a grass, right? So you can see like the pixel value is changing a lot as you move across like neighboring pixels. Now, why this is important, you will later see that when you have noise present in your input image, it resembles more like this intensity profile, which is shown on the bottom here. So this is more related to uh, noise. And that's why I showed you this uh, simple example here. Now, let's talk about uh, what image noise is. Now, first of all, before uh, trying to understand what image noise is, why we see noise in image. So there are a lot of reasons for that. We can have like light variations. We can have noise due to camera electronics, how it was captured. Uh, there might, might be like some fault in the, in the hardware, which is actually used for uh, taking that photograph, right? The sensors or, or the lens. It could be there due to like surface reflectance. It's not always uniform. It could be due to lens. There might be some dirt on your lens, right? Or the lens, the hardware itself might not be perfect. So a lot of other reasons why you have noise in your image and noise is random. And one important property is it occurs with some probability, all right? It won't, it won't occur like all the time. So there will be some probability associated with whatever noise you see in your images. And because it has some like probability, so it will have some kind of distribution. So if it has a distribution, what we can do is we can represent, like we can model this noise. And uh, a very simple way to do that is, for example, if you have an original image, which is completely noise free, right? We call this I original. And uh, this is a function X, Y, you know that this is like the, these are the grid values. So this will give you, this function will give you uh, the true pixel value without having any noise. Okay, for example, this is the image. And then let's say at each pixel X, Y in that grid, we have some kind of noise and we can represent that using this function small n. Right. So if we have to introduce this noise into this original image, the image model will look something like this. So this will be the actually observed image, what we will see, 
will have this original uh, function which represents like images without any noise and we just add like the noise function okay so this is one way we call this additive noise because we are just adding noise to each of these pixels we can have a different model where we can say that instead of adding we can actually multiply noise so that's called multiplicative noise so we can have very varying uh, kind of models so let's not worry about like how it's represented but let's try to understand like okay we can have this kind of model all right so this is the clean image and let's say we had some noise uh, which was given by this function and what will happen is uh, you will see image like this so this is like the observed image when you have noise in your in your uh, sample all right so this is like uh, the example of multiplicative noise uh, which i was explaining earlier instead of addition what you do is you take that noise and you multiply that uh, that with the pixel value and let's say if you have multiplicative noise or uh, some some function then you will observe image something like this okay so the most common uh, form of noise can be represented using a gaussian function we call this a gaussian noise and Gaussian function, you almost remember like from your maybe probability course, it's a curve like this. Right? And this is like a very simple equation of Gaussian from left to right. You will get these values. So this is kind of range of this function. And you can see that the maximum value of Gaussian is around zero, which is mean of this Gaussian function. Right? It peaks at, at here. And if you have like a, a Gaussian noise in an image, it, it might look uh, something like this. But again, this, this will vary depending upon like what kind of Gaussian function you use. Okay. And the most important uh, variable there will be this uh, standard deviation. What's the standard deviation of the Gaussian function you are using? That will define what kind of image you are going to observe. So that was one kind of noise. Other ways to represent noise is like, let's say your noise is coming from a uniform distribution. Okay. So again, this is a simple function which says, if your value is less than let's say a over here but it's towards the left your response will be zero all right the function will return zero all the way up to negative infinity and if the value uh, of uh, of the domain uh, uh, is greater than b all the way up to like plus infinity again the function will return zero but between a and b your function is going to give this value so it's kind of a positive response and the positive response is only between A and B. And it's uniform because this value is not changing. Gaussian, you can see that from negative infinity, it was close to zero, but it was, it was gradually increasing, right? Then it was peaking at the mean, which was zero, and then gradually going down. In this case, it's different. It was completely zero. So this is kind of a step function. Suddenly it's one or whatever this value is. So this is like one over B minus A to just normalize it. And then again, it goes to zero and it, it will remain zero okay so this is a very simple step function and this is like also uniform distribution and uh if we take like a noise from such a distribution we call that salt and pepper noise and the idea is like you will make each pixel in your image either black or white with some uniform probability all right so each pixel you will decide uh, whether you will add noise or not and then you will decide whether uh, whether the noise uh, should be like uh, zero or one so that will come from the step function Either you will make it completely zero or you will make it completely one. So let's say if this is the original image, and if you have salt and pepper noise, it will look something like this. And you can see here that some of the pixels are like completely zero and some are completely one, assuming that the range of this image is between zero and one. Right? And other other pixels uh, you, you won't change at all. 